Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. Also make sure you turn off your hot and cold water supplies. In this video we're going to show you how to change out the Whirlpool washer water inlet valve assembly. It's going to be a very easy repair and should only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new water inlet valve assembly. The water inlet valve assembly is what controls the hot and cold water going into the washer. The main reason to be changing it out is if one of the solenoids has failed and you're not getting any water, or the body is damaged and it's leaking on the floor, or the thermostat has gone bad and it's not telling the control what temperature of water is coming into the washer. In order to get to the part, we have to take the washer apart. First thing we're going to do is go around back and disconnect the fill hoses. Before we disconnect the hoses, we're going to throw a towel down just in case any water comes out when you're taking them off. Once you have the towel down, we can grab our pliers and loosen up the hoses. You want to make sure you keep track of which one's hot and which one's cold. Once you break them free, you can just turn them by hand. Now that we have the fill hose disconnected, we can open up the console. Our style has a Phillips screw right back here where we can just take it out on each side. There's another style that has a trim piece right here that you have to pop off and the screws are located in the front underneath. And then the last style has a little clip under each side that you have to get underneath with a putty knife and pop it off. We're going to use our Phillips screwdriver to take the screws out. Once you get the screw all the way out, it doesn't come out, it just stays there. But you know you have it far enough out when you can push it forward and unlock the tabs. Once you have this screw out, we can go do the other one. To lift the console up, you want to push it towards the front of the washer and swing it up over the back and let it rest. Now that we have the console out of the way, we can remove the clips that hold the cabinet to the back wall. All you have to do is stick a flathead screwdriver onto the clip and flex it and pull it off the cabinet. Once you have both clips removed, we can take the wiring harness off the lid switch. It's just held in by a little tab. You can lift up on it with a flathead screwdriver and pull the wiring harness off. With the lid switch disconnected, we can take the cabinet off the frame. We're going to lift up on the lid and grab it right here and tilt the whole body back to about a 45 degree angle and then lift it off the frame. Once you have it off, you can set it aside. Now that we have the cabinet off the washer, we have access to the water inlet valve. First thing we're going to do is disconnect the wiring harness. There's a locking tab that you have to press to release and you can separate the two halves. Once you have the two halves separated, you're going to run it behind the air pressure hose. And then we're going to go around back and use the needle nose pliers to remove this retainer that holds the wiring harness. Kind of get the console out of the way, just turn it back over. And then we can compress the retainer with the pliers and pull it out from the front. Once you have the wiring harness removed, we can remove the water valve assembly. We're going to take and push down on this so that these three points right here kind of come away from the back wall. Once you have a little space in there, then we're going to lift up to release it and then kind of rotate it out and pull the water inlet valve off the back wall. Here's the old water inlet valve assembly next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. In order to put the new water inlet valve assembly in, you want to make sure that the fittings go through the back wall and as you slide it back on both the hot and the cold, you want to make sure that these round flanges on each side are through the back wall and then line up the locking tabs. Once you have everything lined up, you can push the assembly down and lock it into place. Once you have the valve snapped in place, we can put the wiring harness holder back through the back wall. All you have to do is line it up 
and push it through the hole. Once you have it in and snapped in place, we can route the wiring harness underneath the air hose and the other wiring harness and connect it with the other end. It can only go on one way, so make sure you push it on so it snaps on and you get a good connection. Once you have the wiring harness connected, we can put the washer back together. Now we can put the cabinet back on the washer. You're going to carry it in the same way you took it off. And you want to make sure that on the front, the lip of the cabinet goes underneath the base. And then you can set it down onto the tabs. Once you have it lowered down and the cabinet is on the tabs, you want to make sure that these plastic strips are properly in the cabinet before we put the clips on. To put the cabinet retaining clips on, you just want to line it up with the hole in the back of the cabinet and then push it down and snap it into place. Now that we have both retaining clips in, we can reattach the lid switch wiring harness. All you have to do is line it up and lock it into place. There's a locking tab on the top. You want to make sure you push it all the way in so you get a good connection. Now that we have the lid switch connected, we can Rotate the console over and make sure the tabs go into the cabinet. Once you have them in, you can pull it back and lock it in place. And then we can use our Phillips screwdriver to tighten down the screws. Now we can reattach the fill lines. You want to make sure when you put them on that you get the cold on the cold and the hot on the hot. You want to start them by hand and make sure you don't cross thread them. It's just plastic. It strips out pretty easy. Once you get them snug, you can grab the pliers and tighten them down so you get a good seal. Once you have the fill hoses connected, you can plug the washer back in, turn the water back on, and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by appliancepartspros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.